Chapter 18. Flowers were plentiful that spring because of the winter's heavy rains. The dunes were covered with mats of sand flowers, which are red and have tiny eyes that are sometimes pink and sometimes white. Yuccas grow tall among the rocks of the ravine. Their heads were clustered with curly globes no larger than pebbles and the color of the sun when it rises. Lupines grew where the springs ran. From the sunny cliffs in crevices where no one would think anything could grow sprang the little red and yellow fountains of the Kummelbrot bush. Birds were plentiful too. There were many hummers which can stand still in the air and look like bits of polished stone and have long tongues to sip honey with. There were blue jays which were very quarrelsome birds and black and white peckers that pecked holes in the yucca stalks and the poles of my roof even in the whale bones of the fence. Red-winged black blackbirds also came flying out of the south and flocks of crows and a bird with a yellow body and a scarlet head, which I had never seen before. A pair of these birds made a nest in a stunted tree near my house. It was made from strings of the yucca bush and it had a small opening at the top and hung down like a pouch. The mother laid two speckled eggs, which she and her mate took turns sitting on. After the eggs hatched, I put shreds of abalone under the tree, and these she fed to her young. The young birds were not like their mother and father, being gray and very ugly. But anyway, I took them from the nest and put them in a small cage that I made of reeds. So later in the spring, when all the birds except the crows left the island and flew off to the north, I had these two for friends. They soon grew beautiful feathers like those of their parents and began to make the same sound which was reep, reep, but it was soft and clear and much sweeter than the cries of the gulls or the crows or the talk of the pelicans, which sound like the quarreling of toothless old men. Before summer came, the cage was too small for my two birds, but instead of building a larger one, I cut the tips of their wings, one wing of each, so they could not fly away, and let them loose in the house. By the time their wings had grown out, they had learned to take food from my hand. They would jump down from the roof and perch on my arm and beg, making their reep, reep sound. When their wings began to feather out, I cut them again. This time, I let them loose in the yard, where they hopped, hopped around hunting food, perching out Rontu, who by now had gotten used to them. The next time they feathered out, I did not trim their wings, but they never flew farther away than the ravine and would always come back at night to sleep, and no matter how much they had eaten, to ask for food. One, because he was larger, I called Tainer. I named him after a young man I had liked who had been killed by the Aleuts. The other was called Lorai, which was a name I wished I had been called instead of Karana. During that time that I was taming the birds, I made another skirt. This one I also made of yucca fibers, softened in water and braided into twine. I made it just like the others, with folds running lengthwise. It was open on both sides and hung to my knees. The belt I made of seal skin, which could be tied into a knot. I may also made a pair of sandals from seal skin for walking over the dunes when the sun was hot, or just to be dressed up when I wore my new skirt of yucca twine. Often I would put the skirt on and the sandals and walk along the cliff with Rontu. Sometimes I made a wreath of flowers and fastened it in my hair. After the Aleuts had killed our men at Coral Cove, all the women of our tribe had singled had singed their hair short as a sign of mourning. I had singed mine too with a faggot, but now it had grown long again and came to my wrist. I parted with it and let it fall down my back, except for when I wore a wreath. When I made braids and fastened them with long whale bone pins, I also made a wreath for Rontu's neck, which he had, which he did not like. Together we would walk along the cliff, looking at the sea, and though the white man's ship did not return that spring, it was a happy time. The air smelled of flowers and the birds sang everywhere.